Is it perpetual motion? The beauty of Ryder's machine is the harmonious relationship between the ball, the magnets, and the pendulums. The ball is attracted to the horseshoe magnets, but the swing of the pendulums ensures these are lowered just in time to allow the ball to pass. Then this small round magnet is momentarily attracted to the ball which sets off a series of fulcrums and springs attached to the much heavier pendulum hidden within the main brass stem of the machine. This central pendulum is surrounded by powerful magnets that force it to bend this spring and so oscillate the track in such a way as to ensure it is at all times slightly lower just in front of the ball. These springs in the center of the track are there to give the three smaller pendulums an extra boost each time the ball passes over them thus ensuring they do not lose any of their momentum. In order to generate electricity, the ball would have to have enough momentum to, say, hit the arm of a paddle wheel each time it passes. And once you have an axle that turns, you have the ability to generate electricity. But the importance of Ryder's machine cannot be overstated. Over the three days it was filmed, the ball maintained a constant speed measured to 1 25th of a second. There would therefore appear to be no reason why this machine should not continue to run forever. Perpetual motion. Something that for 300 years conventional science has said is impossible. A proposition we put to a senior university lecturer in physics. When I looked at this device I was amazed by the ingenuity which had gone into this. If the ball is heavy it's not going to get lifted off the track and at the same time if the rid magnet on the top if that has a pivotal connection to the rest of the system so that it can easily move up and down it will move down towards the ball normally the efficiency of any device is about 20 30 40 50 percent this device may have an efficiency of the order of 80 and 90 percent and I have even read some literature which says it has 99% efficiency. When you consider that the internal combustion engine is only 30% efficient, 99% is an extraordinary score. But only at 100% can this machine qualify as perpetual motion. At 101% it can be said to produce surplus and therefore free energy. Where is the power coming from? I had scientists from all over the world looking at it and they can't tell me where the power is coming from. The claim that this is going to run permanently or indefinitely doesn't seem to hold because the second law of thermodynamics tells us that this is not possible. The fellow from Norway sounds sincere enough, but I really don't think he can come out ahead with just magnets, wires, and wheels. But what of Aldo Costa and his claim for the $10,000 perpetual motion prize? Eric Krieg surprised everyone in his final response to Aldo Costa's challenge. Indeed, it appeared as though Mohammed really had come to the mountain. There must be something special about it more than a... Yeah, uh, and wheel. then uh, everybody, there's this, this... Everywhere, you have this little masses, which is two right. kilograms each. Wow, this thing is huge. See how this works. Not only, it seems, had Aldo done the maths, but with every nut, bolt, and rivet, he had backed his absolute belief that contrary to the current laws of physics, energy can be produced by a fuelless machine. He had, he believed, found the holy grail of science perpetual motion.
It is a nice view of the French countryside from high up in the air here. It is impressive that one old man built all of this himself. Yes. Onze. Douze. Treize. Quatorze. Quinze. Seize. Dix-sept. Monsieur Eric, quand on l'arrête, la roue, on la tient. On la lâche. Pourquoi elle repart So, when the wheel is stopped, why did the wheel start again? Some friction is variable. There are other sources of power that can come in. The wind can make a slight amount of power. The sun hitting one side and not the other side can expand it a little bit and make it counterbalance that it might move. From my experience with science and engineering, I can't see how this would ever be a source for external energy. In fact, with all the different sources of friction on this, I don't believe it can be a perpetual motion machine. Euh, pour lui, il ne voit pas où, d'où la, la, la puissance viendrait. Par contre, il voit beaucoup où la puissance pourra être dissipée par euh, notamment toutes les, tous les mécanismes de friction. D'après toutes les explications que vient de me donner M. Eric, euh, les objections sont, sont réelles. Il, il les pense vraiment. Mais c'est l'opinion d'un seul homme. Et ça s'arrête là. That, said Aldo, is the opinion of just one man. And the wheel keeps on turning. Join us tonight for the latest in Aussie innovation with new ideas on how to convert a surfboard bag into a good night's sleep and safely move patients without lifting them. Join us for The New Inventors tonight at 8 on ABC One.